Hi, we're back to present the maintenance section for the Classic Series Single Head Adjustable Pump. Before we get started, there's something that we need to cover, right Karen? That's right, Bill. Before working on a pump, always follow the complete safety and operating instructions in the installation and maintenance manual. And don't forget the required personal protective safety equipment. Use of this safety equipment is mandatory. In addition to the precautions that come with your pump, you must always follow the recommendations of the chemical manufacturer or the material safety data sheet and check local codes for additional guidelines. Preparing the metering pump for service can vary by application, but in general will consist of the following steps. Pump a compatible buffer solution through the pump for several minutes to clean the chemical from the lines. Turn the motor on-off switch to the off position, which is down or to the rear of the pump. Disconnect the suction line from the pump tube suction fitting labeled in in the pump head cover. Before disconnecting the discharge side, bleed off any pressure. Then, disconnect the discharge line from the pump tube discharge fitting labeled out on the pump head cover. Unplug the power cord. If the power cord plug end has been removed, modified, or the metering pump has been directly wired, do not continue. Consult an electrician to aid in disconnecting the pump from the electrical supply and to properly reconnect the pump's electrical supply. We've seen that following the factory installation points helps protect the life of the tube, the pump, and quite simply your investment. And to further protect your investment, it's good to know some of the conditions that can contribute to reducing the life of the pump tube. Excessive back pressure at the point of injection can damage the pump tube. The excessive pressure can be created from the suction or discharge side due to blockage. Insoluble sediments or particulates drawn through the suction line from the bottom of the tank can cause blockage or restriction in the check valve duct bill, creating back pressure that exceeds the pump tube pressure rating. To address this issue, do the following as it applies. Insert a round shank screwdriver through the injection fitting into the pipe to locate or break up accumulated deposits. If a screwdriver can't be inserted, drill the deposit out of the injection fitting. Do not drill through the opposite pipe wall. Replace both the suction and discharge tubing and clean the sediment from the tank bottom. Install the Stenner weighted strainer if not using one and be sure it's three inches from the tank bottom. Replace the duct bill. And at every tube change, trim approximately one inch off the end of both the suction and discharge lines before installing the new ferrules. With every new pump tube, the factory recommends replacing the duct bill for 26 to 100 PSI applications and replacing the ferrules. The ferrules seat the connecting nut to the pump tube fitting and need to be secure. Inside the pump head, normal roller wear can cause a lack of output as a result of the roller's inability to fully squeeze the tube. Corrosive chemical fumes or chemicals that collect on the roller bushings from a tube leak can result in seizing the rollers in the roller assembly. A new pump tube will perform poorly if the rollers are seized. Long-term chemical exposure can cause the tube housing to crack if the chemical is not compatible with the polycarbonate plastic. The solutions being pumped should be referenced with Stenner's Chemical Resistance Guide for the pump tube and tube housing material. The Chemical Resistance Guide can be found in the catalog or on the website. Over the course of the pump service life, the tube housing can crack from wear or from over-tightening the cover screws. Two self-tapping screws secure the cover. If the screw boss is stripped, select only two alternates that are positioned opposite of each other to secure the cover. To address the conditions mentioned, confirm chemical compatibility with the tube housing and pump tube material, which can be different. Review the factory recommended vertical pump installation. In the event of tube rupture, rinse the chemical residue with factory recommended cleaners from the housing and roller assembly. The rollers in the roller assembly should turn freely. If the tube housing is cracked, replace it. The pump tube rubbing against the edge of the tube housing can cause the side to split. It is important to always follow the factory's tube replacement instructions, which include centering the tube on the rollers. The tube won't center if the rollers are worn or if the tube twists during installation. We just reviewed some of the most common conditions that can reduce tube life. The installation manual has a troubleshooting guide to help diagnose conditions and Stenner's customer service is readily available to help on the phone. Now we're going to see how to properly replace the pump tube. 
All safety procedures and warnings need to be followed before performing any work on the metering pump. To remove the pump tube, remove and set aside the pump head cover and screws. Set the feed rate control dial on setting L or 1. Turn the pump on and let it run until one of three roller assembly slots line up with the tube fitting on the suction side. Turn the pump off. Lift the tube fitting out of the housing slot and pull it toward the center of the roller assembly. Then, turn the pump on and allow the roller assembly to jog while guiding the tube with tension up and out of the housing. Turn the pump off. Remove and discard the pump tube. Remove the roller assembly, shaft, and housing. Use a non-citrus all-purpose cleaner to clean chemical residue from the pump head housing, roller assembly, and cover. Check the housing for cracks. Replace if cracked. Ensure the rollers turn freely. Replace the roller assembly if the rollers are seized or worn, or if there is a reduction or lack of output from the pump. Reinstall the clean tube housing. Apply AquaShield to the shaft tip and install. Install the roller assembly. Do not lubricate the pump tube or roller assembly. Identify the cause of tube failure prior to installing a new tube. For example, if a tube failure was caused by blockage in the suction line, clear the blockage and be sure to use the Stenner weighted strainer to keep it three inches from the bottom of the tank. To install the pump tube, manually rotate the roller assembly counterclockwise to align one of three roller assembly slots with the suction side housing slot. Place the tube fitting into the suction side slot of the housing and the roller assembly slot. With the pump setting on L or 1, hold the tube fitting and jog the roller assembly by turning the pump on. It is important to avoid rotating your wrist which can result in a twisted tube that will not center. Do not force the tube and be careful of your fingers. Guide the tube with a slight tension toward the center to prevent pinching between the housing and roller assembly. If the tube is pinched during installation, discard it and start over with a new tube. When the tube reaches the discharge tube housing slot, turn the pump off. Turn the dial ring to setting 10. Hold the tube fitting firmly. Do not pull and turn the pump on. While holding the tube fitting firmly, without pulling, allow the rollers to stretch the tube into place while guiding the tube into the slot. Turn the pump off. A used tube will have stretched approximately 3 quarters of an inch and the new tube will appear to be stiff and short which is why it's important to follow the directions to allow the rollers to stretch the tube into place. Apply a small amount of aqua shield to the cover bushing only and replace the cover and two screws, leaving the front screw between the fittings loose. The cover screws are self-tapping and must be backed in to locate original threads before securing. If a screw boss is stripped, use alternate bosses that are positioned opposite from each other. Never secure the cover plate with more than two screws. The tube housing needs room to flex when the rollers turn so the pump head doesn't crack. To help prevent a split along the side of the tube mentioned earlier in this segment, an important step in replacing the tube is centering it. To center the pump tube on the rollers, ensure the feed rate control dial is set to 10 and turn the pump on. Turn the tube fitting on the suction side not more than one eighth of a turn in the direction the tube must move. Do not let go of the fitting until the tube rides approximately in the center of the rollers. Turn the pump off and let go of the fitting. Tighten the cover screws finger tight only. The cover is not on securely if there is a gap between the screw boss and the cover. To install a new tube in the Classic Series fixed output pump, 
Follow the instructions for the adjustable pump and utilize the on-off switch to jog the roller assembly in the absence of the feed rate control. Bill, do you agree that installing the pump and replacing the tube are not hard to do? I agree. It's simply a matter of being familiar with your application and how your pump operates so that both can work together harmoniously. Now we've mostly reviewed conditions that affect the tube. Now let's take a look at how improper handling can reduce the life of the tube. Tube leakage around the gray fitting and or fitting pulling out of the tube or other tube malfunctions are most commonly caused by mishandling the pump tube. Some examples are not following factory tube replacement instructions, storing tubes in high ambient temperatures or long-term exposure to direct sunlight weakens the tube material, prior to installation, pre-stretching, lubricating the tube and or roller assembly or pinching during installation compromises the tube material. Excessive pulling of the tube fitting during installation can result in compromising the material and or pulling the crimped fitting from the tube. Allow the rollers to stretch the tube into position according to the tube replacement instructions. Using pliers to center or secure connections can break the internal crimped seal or damage ferrules due to over tightening. Finger tight only. Using thread seal tape prevents ferrules from seating properly into the tube fitting and can cause leaks. Not allowing enough slack in the suction and discharge lines so the tube fittings can flex puts stress on the tube and fittings. In summary, here is some of the most important tube information. Confirm the application pressure rating is within the pump tube pressure rating and note that the tubes rated 26 to 100 PSI require the use of a check valve. Always follow factory tube replacement and centering instructions in the manual. Schedule a tube replacement at regular intervals according to the needs of the specific application. Replace ferrules with every tube change. The ferrules are the seat between the tube fitting and the connecting nut and are included with each new tube. Only finger tighten the connecting nut. Hold the tube fitting when tightening to prevent breaking the internal seal and the fitting from spinning inside the tube. For 26 to 100 PSI applications, inspecting and replacing the duct bill at every tube change is recommended. Santaprene pump tubes are not compatible with petroleum or oil-based products. Refer to the chemical resistance chart in the catalog or on the website for compatibility, or call the factory.